CIET NCERT presents Contemporary India The audio textbook in geography for class 10 part 2 Chapter 7 Lifelines of National Economy This chapter has 13 pages It has been read by Shiba Mal Page 81 Lifelines of National Economy We use different materials and services in our daily life. Some of these are available in our immediate surroundings, while other requirements are met by bringing things from other places. Goods and services do not move from supply locals to demand locals on their own. The movement of these goods and services from their supply locations to demand locations necessitates the need for transport. Some people are engaged in facilitating these movements. These are known to be traders who make the products come to the consumers by transportation. Thus, the pace of development of a country depends upon the production of goods and services as well as their movement over space. Therefore, Efficient means of transport are prerequisites for fast development. Movement of these goods and services can be over three important domains of our earth that is land, water and air. Based on these, transport can also be classified into land, water and air transport. For a long time Trade and transport were restricted to a limited space with the development in science and technology the area of influence of trade and transport expanded far and wide today the world has been converted into a large village with the help of efficient and fast moving transport transport has been able to achieve this with the help of equally developed communication system Therefore transport communication and trade are complementary to each other Today India is well linked with the rest of the world despite its vast size diversity and linguistic and socio-cultural plurality Railways airways waterways newspapers radio television cinema and internet etc have been contributing to its socio-economic progress in many ways the trades from local to international levels have added to the vitality of its economy it has enriched our life and added substantially to growing amenities and facilities for the comforts of life in this chapter you will see how modern means of transport and communication serve as lifelines of our nation and its modern economy it is thus evident that a dense and efficient network of transport and communication is a prerequisite for local national and global trade of today figure 7.1 the given table categorizes the means of transport into three major categories which is further categorized into many subdivisions means of transport are divided into three broad categories as land water and air land is then divided into roadways railways and pipelines water transport is categorized under inland and overseas waterways whereas air is divided into domestic airways and international airways for domestic airways public undertaking and private airlines can be seen in our country page 82 transport roadways india has one of the largest road networks in the world aggregating to about 2.3 million kilometer at present in india roadways have preceded railways they still have an edge over railways in view of the ease with which they can be built and maintained the growing importance of road transport vis-a-vis rail transport is rooted in the following reasons 
A. Construction cost of roads is much lower than that of railway lines. B. Roads can traverse comparatively more dissected and undulating topography. C. Roads can negotiate higher gradients of slopes and as such can traverse mountains such as the Himalayas. D. Road transport is economical in transportation of few persons and relatively smaller amount of goods over short distances. E. It also provides door-to-door service. Thus, the cost of loading and unloading is much lower. F. Road transport is also used as a feeder to other modes of transport, such as they provide a link between railway stations, air and seaports. In India, roads are classified in the following six classes according to their capacity. Look at the map of the national highways and find out about the significance role played by these roads. Golden Quadrilateral Super Highways The government has launched a major road development project linking Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai, Mumbai and Delhi by six-lane super highways. The north-south corridors linking Srinagar, that is in Jammu and Kashmir, and Kanyakumari, which is located in the state of Tamil Nadu. An east-west corridor connecting Silcha, which is in Assam, and Porbandar, a city of Gujarat, are a part of this project. The major objective of these superhighways is to reduce the time and distance between the mega cities of India. These highway projects are being implemented by the National Highway Authority of India, that is NHAI. National Highways National highways link extreme parts of the country. These are the primary road systems and are laid and maintained by the Central Public Works Department, that is CPWD. A number of major national highways run in north-south and east-west directions. The historical Shesha Suri Marg is called National Highway No. 1 between Delhi and Amritsar. Figure 7.2 There is a picture given which shows Ahmedabad Vadodara Expressway. Activity Find out places linked by the National Highway 2 and 3. From the box, do you know? Do you know that National Highway 7 is the longest and traverses 2,369 km between Varanasi and Kanyakumari via Jabalpur, Nagpur, Hyderabad, Bangalore and Madurai. Delhi and Mumbai are connected by National Highway 8, while National Highway 15 covers most of Rajasthan. State Highways Roads linking a state capital with different district headquarters are known as state highways. These roads are constructed and maintained by the State Public Works Department, that is PWD, in state and union territories. District Roads These roads connect the district headquarters with other places of the district. These roads are maintained by the Zilla Parishad. Other Roads Rural Roads which link rural areas and villages with towns, are classified under this category. These roads received special impetus under the Pradhan Mantri Gramin Sadak Yojana. Under this scheme, special provisions are made so that every village in the country is linked to a major town in the country by an all-season motorable road. Page 83 There is a map given on page number 83 where the major highways are highlighted. India, its national highways are given in this map of India where the major cities and towns are connected with the Golden Quadrilateral, North-South Corridor, East-West Corridor and National Highway with numbers indicated against it. It also shows the North-South Corridor 
connecting Srinagar to Kanyakumari, east-west corridor connecting Porbandar to Silcha. The Golden Quadrilateral is connecting many cities and the major four metropolitan cities are Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai and Kolkata. Page 84 Border Roads Apart from these, Border Roads Organization, a government of India undertaking, constructs and maintains roads in the bordering areas of the country. This organization was established in 1960 for the development of roads for strategic importance and northeastern border areas. These roads have improved accessibility in areas of difficult terrain and have helped in the economic development of these areas. Figure 7.3 It shows a road in the hilly tracks. Figure 7.4 Traffic on Northeastern Border Road, Arunachal Pradesh. Roads can also be classified on the basis of the type of material used for their construction, such as metalled and unmetalled roads. Metalled roads may be made of cement, concrete or even bitumen of coal. Therefore, these are all-weather roads. Unmetalled roads go out of use in the rainy season. Road density. The length of road per 100 square kilometer of area is known as density of roads. Distribution of road is not uniform in the country. Density of all roads varies from only 12.14 kilometer in Jammu and Kashmir to 517.77 kilometer in Kerala as on 31st March 2011. With a national average of 142.68 km, as on 31st March 2011. Road transportation in India faces a number of problems. Keeping in view the volume of traffic and passengers, the road network is inadequate. About half of the roads are unmetalled and this limits their usage during the rainy season. The national highways are inadequate too. Moreover, the roadways are highly congested in cities and most of the bridges and culverts are old and narrow. However, in recent years, fast development of road network has taken place in different parts of the country. Railways Railways are the principal mode of transportation for freight and passengers in India. Railways also make it possible to conduct multifarious activities like business, sightseeing, pilgrimage along with transportation of goods over longer distances. Apart from an important means of transport, the Indian railways have been a great integrating force for more than 150 years. Railway in India bind the economic life of the country as well as accelerate the development of the industry and agriculture. The Indian Railway have a network of 7,133 stations spread over a route length of 64,460 km with a fleet of 9,213 locomotives 53,220 passenger service vehicles, 6,493 other coach vehicles and 2,29,381 wagons as on March 2001. Page 85 From the box, the Indian Railways is the largest public sector undertaking in the country. The first train steamed off from Mumbai to Thane in 1853, covering a distance of 34 km. Table 7.1 India, the railway tracks. The Indian railway network runs on multiple gauge operations, extending over 64,460 km provisional, excluding the metro Kolkata. In the table, the gauge in meters are given, the route length they cover, 
the running track in kilometer is mentioned also the total track in kilometers is given broad gauge is 1.676 meter wide and its total route which it covers is 55188 its running track length is 77347 kilometers and total track is 102.680 kilometer meter gauge which is just 1 meter wide its route length is 6809 kilometers running track is 7219 kilometers and total track is 8561 kilometer narrow gauge it varies from 0.762 and 0.610 wide rails its total route is 2463 kilometers long running track is just 2474 kilometers long and its total track length is 2753 kilometers if we sum up all the three gauges we get the total route length of 64460 kilometers the sum of the running track is 87040 kilometers and the sum of the total track is 113994 kilometers source railway yearbook 2010-2011 ministry of railways government of india activity find out the current railway zones and their headquarters also locate the headquarters of railway zones on the map of india from the text the indian railway is now recognized into 16 zones the distribution pattern of the railway network in the country has been largely influenced by physiographic economic and administrative factors the northern plains with their vast level land high population density and rich agricultural resources provided the most favorable condition for their growth however a large number of rivers requiring construction of bridges across their wide beds posed some obstacles in the hilly terrains of the peninsular region railway tracks are laid through low hills gaps or tunnels The Himalayan mountainous regions too are unfavorable for the construction of railway lines due to high relief, sparse population and lack of economic opportunities. Likewise, it was difficult to lay railway lines on the sandy plain of western Rajasthan. Swamps of Gujarat, forested tracts of Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Odisha and Jharkhand. The contiguous stretch of Sahidri could be crossed only through gaps or passes which are known as ghats in recent times the development of the konkan railway along the west coast has facilitated the movement of passengers and goods in this most important economic region of india it has also faced a number of problem such as sinking of track in some stretches and landslides today the railways have become more important in our national economy than all other means of transport put together however rail transport suffers from certain problems as well many passengers travel without ticket thefts and damaging of railway property has not yet stopped completely people stop the trains pull the chain unnecessarily and this causes heavy damage to the railway think over it how we can help our railway in running as per the scheduled time page 86 there is a map given of india which shows the railway lines it shows the dense network of railways all over the country it shows the railway routes and the major stations connecting the state of jammu and kashmir 
Sikkim and northern Arunachal Pradesh does not show a very dense network of railways. For the reasons in Jammu and Kashmir, the rugged terrain, in Sikkim, high mountains and rugged terrain, whereas in Arunachal Pradesh, very thick forest. Pipelines Pipeline transport network is a new arrival on the transportation map of India. In the past, these were used to transport water to cities and industries. Now, these are used for transporting crude oil, petroleum products and natural gas from oil and natural gas fields to refineries, fertilizer factories and big thermal power plants. Solids can also be transported through a pipeline when converted into slurry. The far Indian locations of refineries like Barani, Mathura, Panipat and gas-based fertilizer plants could be thought of only because of pipelines. Initial cost of laying pipelines is high, but subsequent running costs are minimal. It rules out transshipment losses or delays. Page 87 There are three major networks of pipeline transportation in the country. First, from oil field in Upper Assam to Kanpur in Uttar Pradesh, via Guwahati, Barani and Allahabad. It has branches from Barani to Haldia via Rajband, Rajband to Morigram and Guwahati to Siliguri. From Salaya in Gujarat to Jalandhar in Punjab via Viramgam, Mathura, Delhi and Sonipat. It has branches to connect Koyali near Vadodara in Gujarat, Chakshu and other places. Third, gas pipeline from Hazira in Gujarat connects Jagdishpur in Uttar Pradesh via Vijaypur in Madhya Pradesh. It is branches to Kota in Rajasthan, Shah Jahanpur, Babrala and other places in Uttar Pradesh. Waterways Since time immemorial, India was one of the seafaring countries. Its seamen sailed far and near, thus carrying and spreading Indian commerce and culture. Waterways are the cheapest means of transport. They are most suitable for carrying heavy and bulky goods. It is a fuel-efficient and environment-friendly mode of transport. India has inland navigation waterways of 14,500 km in length. Out of these, only 5,685 km are navigable by mechanized vessels. The following waterways have been declared as the national waterways by the government. First, the Ganga River between Allahabad and Haldia, which is 1,620 km long and this is the national waterway number one. Second, the Brahmaputra River between Sadia and Dhubri. It is 891 km long and this is national waterway number two. Third, the West Coast Canal in Kerala, which is in Kottapuram, Kollam and Udyogamandal and Champakara Canals which together is for 205 kilometers, and this is National Waterway Number 3. Fourth, specified stretches of Godavari and Krishna rivers along with Kakinada Pondicherry stretch of canals. The total length for this is 1078 kilometers, and this is National Waterway Number 4. Fifth, Specified stretches of river Brahmani along with Matai River, delta channels of Mahanadi and Brahmani rivers in East Coast Canal, which is only for 588 kilometers, and this is National Waterway Number 5. Figure 7.5 
a picture which shows inland waterways widely used in northeastern states. There are some other inland waterways on which substantial transportation takes place. These are Mandwi, Zuwari and Kumbarja, Sundarbans, Barak, backwaters of Kerala and tidal stretches of some other rivers. Apart from these, India's trade with foreign countries is carried from the ports located along the coast. 95% of country's trade volume, that is 68% in terms of value, is moved by sea. Major Seaports With a long coastline of 7,116.6 km, India is dotted with 12 major and 187 notified non-major, that is minor and intermediate ports. These major ports handle 95% of India's foreign trade. Kanla in Kutch was the first port developed soon after independence to ease the volume of trade on the Mumbai port. In the wake of loss of Karachi port to Pakistan after the partition, Kandla is a tidal port. It caters to the convenient handling of exports and imports of highly productive granary and industrial belts stretching across the states of Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan and Gujarat. There is a picture given of the trucks being driven into the vessel at Mumbai port in figure 7.6. Mumbai is the biggest port with a spacious, natural and well-sheltered harbour. The Jawaharlal Nehru port was planned with a view to decongest the Mumbai port and serve as a hub port for this region. Page 88 Marmagao Port, Goa, is the premier iron ore exporting port of the country. This port accounts for about 50% of India's iron ore export. New Mangalore Port, located in Karnataka, caters to the export of iron ore concentrates from Kudrimuk mines. Kochi is the extreme southwestern port located at the entrance of a lagoon with a natural harbour. Moving along the east coast, you would see the extreme southeastern port of Tutikoran in Tamil Nadu. This port has a natural harbour and rich hinterland. Thus, it has a flourishing trade handling of a large variety of cargoes to even our neighbouring countries like Sri Lanka, Maldives, etc. and the coastal regions of India. Chennai is one of the oldest artificial ports of the country. It is ranked next to Mumbai in terms of the volume of trade and cargo. Vishakapatnam is the deepest landlocked and well-protected port. This port was originally conceived as an outlet for iron ore exports. Paradweep port located in Odisha specializes in the export of iron ore. Kolkata is an inland riverine port. This port serves a very large and rich hinterland of Ganga Brahmaputra Basin. Being a tidal port, it requires constant dredging of Hooghly. Haldia port was developed as a subsidiary port in order to relieve growing pressure on the Calcutta port. Figure 7.8 Handling of oversized cargo at Tutukoran port is shown in this picture. Airways. The air travel today is the fastest, most comfortable and prestigious mode of transport. It can cover very difficult terrains like high mountains, dreary deserts, dense forests and also long oceanic stretches with great ease. Think of the northeastern part of the country marked with presence of big rivers, dissected relief, dense forest and frequent floods and international frontiers etc. in the absence of air transport. 
air travel has made access easier. The air transport was nationalized in 1953. On the operational side, Indian Airlines, Alliance Air, that is subsidiary of Indian Airlines, private scheduled airlines and non-scheduled operators provide domestic air services. Air India provides international air services. Pawan Hans Helicopter Limited provides helicopter service to oil and natural gas corporation in its offshore operations to inaccessible areas and difficult terrains like the northeastern states and the interior parts of Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. Indian Airlines operations also extend to the neighboring countries of South and Southeast Asia and the Middle East. Find out the names of the countries connected by Indian Airlines. Air travel is not within the reach of the common people. It is only in the northeastern states that special provisions are made to extend the services to the common people. Page 89 A map of India is given which shows the major ports and the international airports. The northernmost international airport which is shown here is Amritsar and the name of the airport is Raja Sansi. It shows Delhi, Indira Gandhi International Airport. It shows many seaports like Kandla, Mumbai, Marmagao, Tutikoran, Paradweep, Vishakapatnam, etc. Page 90 Communication Ever since humans appeared on the earth, they have used different means of communication. But the pace of change has been rapid in modern times. Long-distance communication is far easier without physical movement of the communicator or receiver. Personal communication and mass communication, including television, radio, press, films, etc., are the major means of communication in the country. The Indian Postal Network is the largest in the world. It handles parcels as well as personal written communications. Cards and envelopes are considered first-class mail and are airlifted between stations covering both land and air. The second-class mail includes book packets, registered newspapers and periodicals. They are carried by surface mail, covering land and water transport. To facilitate quick delivery of mails in large towns and cities, six mail channels have been introduced recently. They are called Rajdhani Channel, Metro Channel, Green Channel, Business Channel, Bulk Mail Channel and Periodical Channel. And there's a picture given here, that is figure 7.10, where MHC call box on NH8 is shown from the text. India has one of the largest telecom networks in Asia. Excluding urban places, more than two-thirds of the village in India have already been covered with subscriber trunk dialing, that is, STD phone facility. In order to strengthen the flow of information from the grassroots to the higher level, the government has made special provision to extend 24 hours STD facility to every village in the country. There is a uniform rate of STD facilities all over India. It has been made possible by integrating the development in space technology with communication technology. Mass communication provides entertainment and creates awareness among people about various national programs and policies. It includes radio, television, newspapers, magazines, books and films, all India radio, that is Akashwani, broadcasts a variety of programs in national, regional and local languages for various categories of people. 
spread over different parts of the country. Doordarshan, the national television channel of India, is one of the largest terrestrial network in the world. It broadcasts a variety of programs from entertainment, educational to sports, etc., for people of different age groups. India publishes a large number of newspapers and periodicals annually. They are of different types depending upon their periodicity. Newspapers are published in about 100 languages and dialects. Did you know that the largest number of newspapers published in the country are in Hindi, followed by English and Urdu? India is the largest producer of feature films in the world. It produces short films, video feature films and video short films. The Central Board of Film Certification is the authority to certify both Indian and foreign films. From the box, do you know? Till March 2010, 548.32 million mobile connections were in India. Make a comparison with any other country of your choice. International Trade The exchange of goods among people, states and countries is referred to as trade. The market is the place where such exchanges take place. Trade between two countries is called international trade. It may take place through sea, air or land routes, while local trade is carried in cities, towns and villages, state-level trade is carried between two or more states. Advancement of international trade of a country is an index to its economic prosperity. It is, therefore, considered the economic barometer for a country. Page 91 As the resources are space-bound, no country can survive without international trade. Export and import are the components of trade. The balance of trade of a country is the difference between its export and import. When the value of export exceeds the value of imports, it is called a favourable balance of trade. On the contrary, if the value of imports exceeds the value of exports, it is termed as unfavourable balance of trade. India has trade relations with all the major trading blocks and all geographical regions of the world. Among the commodities in export, the share of agriculture and allied products has been 9.9%, ores and minerals 4.0%, gems and jewellery 14.7%, petroleum products, which includes coal, 16.8%, in 2010-2011. The commodities imported to India include petroleum and petroleum products, that is 28.6%, pearls and precious stones 9.4%, chemicals 5.2%, coal, coke and briquettes 2.7%, machinery 6.4% in 2010-2011. Bulk imports as a group registered a group accounting for 28.2% of total imports. This group includes fertilizers 3.4%, cereals 14.3%, edible oils 7.4% and newsprint that is paper broad manufacture and newsprint 40.3% in 2010-2011. International trade has undergone a sea change in the last 15 years. Exchange of commodities and goods have been superseded by the exchange of information and knowledge. India has emerged as a software giant at the international level and it is earning large foreign exchange through the export of information technology. Tourism as a trade Tourism in India has grown substantially over the last three decades. Foreign tourist arrivals in the country witnessed an increase of 11.8% during the year 2010 
as against the year 2009 contributing rupees 64889 crore of foreign exchange in 2010 5.78 million foreign tourists visited India in 2010. More than 15 million people are directly engaged in the tourism industry. A news item is given. It states that India has become a popular destination for the tourists. Also that medical tourism has increased in the past few years. Page 92 Tourism also promotes national integration, provides support to local handicrafts and cultural pursuits. It also helps in the development of international understanding about our culture and heritage. Foreign tourists visit India for heritage tourism, ecotourism, ad- adventure tourism, cultural tourism, medical tourism and business tourism. There is a vast potential for development of tourism in all parts of the country. Efforts are being made to promote different types of tourism for this upcoming industry. Activity. On the map of India, show important tourist places of your state or union territory and its connectivity with other parts of the country by railways, roadways or airways. discuss in the class the topics given here first what type of tourism may be developed in your state or union territory and why second which areas in your state or union territory you find more attractive for development of tourism and why third how tourism may be helpful for the economic development of a region adopting sustainable development approach exercises first multiple choice questions one of one which two of the following extreme locations are connected by the east west corridor a mumbai and nagpur b silchar and porbandar c mumbai and kolkata or d nagpur and siliguri Two of one. Which mode of transportation reduces transshipment losses and delays? A. Railways. B. Roadways. C. Pipeline. Or D. Waterways. Three of one. Which of the following states is not connected with the HVJ pipeline? A. Madhya Pradesh. B. Maharashtra. C. Gujarat. Or D. Uttar Pradesh. Four of one. Which of the following ports is the deepest landlocked and well protected port along the east coast A Chennai B Paradweep C Tuticorin or D Visakhapatnam 5 of 1 Which of the following is the most important modes of transportation in India A pipeline B railways C roadways or D airways Which one of the following terms is used to describe trade between two or more countries? A. Internal trade B. International trade C. External trade or D. Local trade Question 2 Answer the following questions in about 30 words. 1 of 2 State any three merits of roadways. 2 of 2 Where and why is rail transport the most convenient means of transportation? 3 of 2 What is the significance of border roads? 4 of 2 What is meant by trade? What is the difference between international and local trade? Answer the following questions in about 120 words. 1 of 3 Why are the means of transportation and communication called the lifelines of a nation and its economy? 2 of 3 Write a note on the changing nature of the international trade in the last 15 years.
page 93. Here is a table given with a few destinations hidden in the puzzle. There are 14 rows and 16 columns in the puzzle and an alphabet is written in each graticule. Pairing with the other alphabet if we get the names of various destinations across the country. The clues are First, Northern Terminal of the North-South Corridor Second, the name of the National Highway No. 2 Third, the headquarter of the Southern Railway Zone Fourth, the rail gauge with a track width of 1.676 meters. Fifth, the southern terminal of the National Highway Number 7. Sixth, a river Rhine port. And seventh, busiest railway junction in northern India. You were just listening Chapter 7, Lifelines of National Economy. Read by Shiba Mal. Recorded by Shanu Muksim. Production assistance Vimlesh Chaudhary and produced by Ajith Horo. This audio chapter is brought to you by CIET NCERT New Delhi.